Hello, good evening and welcome ladies and gentlemen and all members of the Guthrie Street community. Welcome to Guthrie Street TV. I'm your host, Mr. Hildebrand. I'm joined here with Mr. Wright. Hey everyone, happy Easter. And Mr. Brown. How's it going? And we've got um, a, a really big week this week in education. Uh, we just started remote learning. It's going to be very interesting to see how everyone copes with the remote learning and I'm very excited to do PE at home. Yeah, hopefully... My class 3JH are doing their work at home, doing work really hard. I'll be keeping up with them later on. Um, and we've just had school holidays. First week of term two. What'd you get up to on your holidays, Mr. Wright? Mr. Hoodman, watched lots of Marvel movies. I think I'm up to nine or 10 Marvel movies now. So lots of holidaying on the couch. It's been great. Ooh, I got half, about halfway through Thor Ragnarok last night. Oh, just, lovely. Yeah. Great movies. Mm. Love my Marvel. The quality. Thor Ragnarok. Mm. Um, Let's talk about the show. Yeah, well... A little bit about us. Guthrie well, Street TV. All right, a bit about Guthrie Street TV. Well, every episode should be airing every Monday. Monday uh, afternoon. Um, Monday afternoon after we get ready to end in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you can catch us on YouTube at Guthrie Street TV, but we'll also upload to Facebook as well. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Tell your friends about us. Good. We're going to have lots of different segments on the show, so... If you want to comment or send in videos or photos, you need to do it on the Facebook post when it gets uploaded to the school Facebook. Excellent. All right. So our first segment is Street Talk with Mr. Wright. So do you want to tell us a bit about that, Mr. Wright? Good. Street Talk. We're doing Street Talk with a couple of students in the school and staff in the school. We're not actually going to walk the streets. We're going to do it on Zoom. So to start us off on episode one, we've got Mr. Bicknell and we've got Lucy Bicknell. Check it out right now. All right, Mr. B, welcome to Guthrie Street TV. How are you? Very well, thank you. That's the way I've got Mr. Hildebrand with me. And I've got Mr. Brown here as well. Brown. And we've got some tricky questions for you. So are you ready to get into it? Okay, give us a go. All right, so the first three questions are, would you rather questions? Okay. So the first one, question number one, would you rather have a horse's tail or a unicorn horn? Um, I think I'd like to have the horse's tail. Horse's tail? Mm. Why the horse's tail? Um, I've been working outside the last week and a bit, just doing some of my jobs and the flies have been on me. So if I had a horse's tail, the flies wouldn't be a problem. Ah. Fair enough. Good job. Mr. Brown's got the next one. All right. Would you rather hold a snake or kiss a jellyfish? Hold a snake. That's an easy one. Yeah. Quick answer on that one. And Mr. Hildebrand. Would you rather always smell rotten meat or smell a skunk? Oh, gee. Neither. Neither. Do I have to, do I have to give you an answer? I think you've got an answer. you got to pick one. That's the would you rather. Um... I've never smelled a skunk, so I'm going to smell a skunk. That's gross. That's mm. yuck. I can't believe you chose that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Into the more serious questions. So at the moment, we're all in isolation on restriction number three. Name a positive yep. and a negative about being in isolation at the moment. Uh, I think the positives would have to be being able to catch up on a heap of jobs that you you let go when you're working full time and when you're busy and running kids around and things like that. So that's probably the positive for me. Um, the negative is the cabin fever that you get and you just can't go and uh, do the things that you normally would do, which is catch out with friends and things like that. So yep. that's probably the negative. Yeah. Lots of work in the garden. Lots of work in the garden. Made some furniture. So it's been pretty cool. Painted the fence. Painted the fence. Yes. Yeah, so I've done some odd jobs. Great job. All right. Ah, next one. Sorry. We're going to do it home for fun. Yeah. So what have you been doing at home for fun? For fun? For fun, yeah. So uh, we we bought a jigsaw puzzle, which took us about four days. Three to, days. Not three days. Three days, one night to put together. So that was a bit of fun. Um, one that we all did together. Um, I played a bit of guitar, tried to get back into, not that I'm a very good guitarist, but I, I have a, a guitar, so I did a little bit of that in the first week of the holidays. Um, 
So, yeah, just kicking around doing things that I haven't done for a long time. So it's good. Very nice. Good job. We've actually got a, another segment that's all about hidden talent. So we might have to get you on the guitar in a video. Uh, I don't know about that. I'm not up to that. I'm not up to that level yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have a book, a movie or a TV show or a podcast or something that you would recommend? Um, we watched the series on Netflix, Divergent. Very good. Good movie. Divergent, yeah. A good series. Divergent. Awesome. Check it out, guys. Check it out. Go check it out. Um, the best advice someone has ever given you? The best advice someone's Probably ever given Probably to shave the moustache, I would have thought. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, don't grow a moustache might have been the, the advice. <laughs> um, I think... Um, I don't know. It, um, maybe it was around. My dad always said to me when I was growing up that um, dedication was a real um, strength to have, and he always thought I didn't have enough dedication. But um, that was probably one thing: dedicate yourself to your craft, whatever that is, whether it's footy, netball, work, you know, building, whatever it is. Uh, put some dedication to it. Mm. All right, next one up. Um, choose five famous people who would you want who you'd want to isolate with. Uh, five famous people. Mm. Right oh. Um, Samuel L. Jackson. Um, love his his uh, his talk, his language. Um, he's, he's he's great. Um, I think. Uh, I'm trying to pick people from sort of different fields rather than sort of the same field. From the sporting front, I think I would love to have Dustin Martin to isolate with to get a, get to know him a bit better because um, I think he's a bit of a enigma and is probably a bit more turn than what, what you see. Um, so Samuel Jackson, Dustin Martin, from a Political sense, Barack Obama would be one, just um, the way he changed American politics. Um, four would be my childhood sweetheart, Al McPherson. Um, and I think I'd probably have to take my wife. So there's five. Right Ooh, that's lovely. Lovely, lovely there. We're waiting for that one. Mm. All right, Mr. B, thanks for joining us on the first episode of Guthrie Street TV. It's been a pleasure. No worries. We'll catch up with you soon. Good on you. Thanks, guys. Okay, Lucy, welcome to Guthrie Street TV. Are you ready for some tricky questions? Yeah. yeah awesome. She sounds ready. Yeah, she's, she sounds <laughs> keen as. Uh, <laughs> would you rather eat tacos or pizza? Pizza. Why pizza? Um, so I like pizza more. Yeah. <laughs> what do you like most about pizza? Um, Who's the best pizza maker in your house? <laughs> you don't have um, to say dad because he's standing there. <laughs> um, I don't know, probably Eliza or dad. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite? What's your favorite flavor of pizza? Margarita. Margarita. Nice. Just to follow up on the pizza, do you think pineapple belongs on pizza? No. <laughs> no. All right. Next question. Would you rather never eat your favorite food for the rest of your life, or only be allowed to eat your favorite food for the rest of your life? Ooh. I guess we need to know what the favourite food is, don't we? Yeah, true. True. What is your favourite food? Um, is this something not healthy? Mm. So I'll go not eating that again. What's your favourite food? I don't know. You don't really have one, but it'll definitely be that. It'll definitely be that's not healthy. Junk food, I reckon mm. that's my favourite too. Yeah, Tim Tams. All right, and the last question of the silly questions is, would you rather be a police officer or a firefighter? Police officer. Why a police officer? Because you get to know what's happening and like 
proof to be like no like who's done bad things and who's done good things and all that. Mm. Have you been in trouble with the police before? No, but that has. <laughs> oh, <I have> not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a zinger. Great job. <laughs> all right, here's the serious questions. Okay. We've got about five questions for you. So can you tell us what the coronavirus is? Um, it's a virus that can kill you. Good. So and you wouldn't want to catch it, would you? No. Good job. Yes. Uh, what have you been doing at home for fun? Um, we did a, pu a family puzzle. I got out the Lego and I did some of that. Um, we, a cup. Well, we put the fire on and we had some marshmallows. Oh, nice. So it's baking? Some cooking? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we made a cake. Oh, nice. Excellent. Good job. Mr. Brown's got the next one. All right. Last question. Last question here? Last question last, for you. Last question for me. Lovely. <laughs> I'm not great on telly. Um, so, Lucy, who's your teacher? My teacher. Mm -hmm. Mrs. James. Miss James, all right. And what's the best thing about Miss James, in your opinion? Um, sometimes she goes off topic and we get to have a laugh with her. Very nice. Good job. Lovely. And the very last one we've got for you is the same as Mr. B did. Can you name five famous people that you would like to be in isolation with? Um, it could be anyone. It could be netballers, actors. Favourite PE teachers? <laughs> um, What's your favourite singer? What do what, what, what you listen to? Um, Taylor Swift, something like that? Yeah. I don't know. You don't know? Would you take your dad loose? Who would you take out of our family? Um, Jack. Jack? Jack the dog? <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. It's a tricky question, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, Maybe name one. Tell us one person that you like to spend isolation with. Someone that's funny and that's nice to talk to. I don't know who. Footy players, footy players. Um... There was a ritual pleasure life, didn't you? Well, I know Jack Brown, Dusty Martin. Jack Brown, Dusty Martin, yep. Perfect. That'll do. All right, we'll wrap it up. Thanks, Luz, for joining us on Guthrie Street TV, and we'll see you when we see you. Thanks for having me. No worries. Bye. Bye. All right, thanks, Lucy and Mr. B, for your interviews. I thought it was really interesting that Mr. Bickner wanted to have Dusty over for isolation. I don't know whether Dusty would cope too well being in the house for that long, but that was great. I thought it was interesting growing the moustache. Yeah. Hopefully he keeps it. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. he keeps it. Have Mario Couldn't coming around school. At, um, at assemblies. Yeah. So thank you very much, guys, for those interviews. That was great. All right, we're going to send it over to Mr. Brown now for the What You Got. Tell us a bit about that, Mr. Brown. What You Got is a segment where you can send in videos showing off a talent, a cool collection, or a skill that you've got. If you have something that you want to show off, send it in via direct message through the school's Facebook page. The school Facebook, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, our first feature this week is from our very own Mr. Minogue, who has an awesome collection. So, Mr. Minogue, What, what You Got? got? Welcome to What You Got, where we talk about some of the things that we collect as people and teachers that are quite unique. <clears throat> as you can see, this is my, I guess you'd say toy tractor collection, but tractor collectibles I'd say. Um, as you can see, quite an extensive number, there's probably over 200 items in the collection, as there is, um, mostly green, um, and lined up organised in series or in um, order of, uh, chronological order of age. Um, some here quite expensive, like this one down here. To buy that now would probably, that would set you back probably three, nearly four hundred dollars to get one of those these days in that condition, still in the box. Um, 
yes, with the dollar not being so good, I'm probably not importing as many from America as I used to. Um, the forward tractors up here, if you get a look at those, they're probably $300 each to buy them now. And then being in a set, they're worth a bit more because they didn't make a lot of them. Um, obviously things here, you know, like this one here, was my original that I have had for longer than I care to remember. Um, <clears throat> I think it's sentimental value, like the tractor and baler, which is similar to a setup we had in the in the nineties. So yeah, very unique, one of a kind. Um, to put a value on it, you probably couldn't. It's quite priceless, and some of the stuff you really just can't get anymore. Being hard to find. So thank you. Well, that is quite a collection right there. Thank you, Mr. Vinog, for showing us what you got. Tell you what, when his little boy Jack gets older, I'll tell you he can be playing with all those tractors. Puts a lot of time and a lot of money into that, so mm. thanks, Mr. Vinog. A lot of care. Look, I've even heard he waxes his lawnmower that's also a John Deere. He polishes it every night, too. Yeah, so it's nice and green. Loves it. Hey, did you hear about the wooden tractor? No. No? no? no. So it had wooden wheels, a wooden engine, a wooden transmission. Wouldn't work. Okay, our next said segment is Hildy's mailbag. Now, normally, we would this would be the part where I pull some mail out of my mailbag and I'd read it to. It's empty this week. I know it's all empty. There's nothing in it. Nothing we can read about. So, what we want for the Hildy's mailbag is I want you to send in any letters that you've got to the school, maybe to your teacher, maybe it's something you want to share, thank you letters, maybe some gem. Could be a joke of the week. Yeah, could be mm. jokes, could be riddles, some funny stories, whatever you think's worth <laughs> seeing or worth sending in, we want to hear about it and we're going to read it on Hildy's mailbag. Can parents send in letters as well? Parents can send in letters, staff can send in letters, anybody can send in letters. And we'll leave the, uh, the postal address on the Facebook post as well, so yep. check that out as yep. well. Okay, our next segment is Challenge of the Week. Very good, Challenge of the Week. So this week we have one of our teachers who has set the challenge for the week. I think this teacher is TikTok famous as well. She's pretty good with her dance moves, so she's gonna teach you how to do the TikTok dance, and then you need to post the dance on the Facebook message, okay? So here is Miss O'Brien with the TikTok dance. Hi everyone! This week I am doing the Macarena Dance Challenge. Um, so I'm just going to quickly show you the different steps um, as from TikTok and see if you can have a go. So you just do the normal Macarena. Um, so put your arms out, up, head, cross and across. And then you do this little drum thing. And then I don't know what this is called but you throw your arms up and then down. Um, and then when you play music you just do it a lot quicker all together. Good luck! Thanks, Miss O'Brien, for that video. When you guys film your challenge of the week, can you please post it to the Facebook group in the comment section? And you might even feature on next week's show. All right, our next segment is a how-to video by none other than our fantastic art teacher, Mrs. Turton, showing us how to do some pop art. Enjoy. Hi guys, today we are looking at pop art, which stands for popular art, and the most popular artist was Andy Warhol, and he had a famous quote that said, everybody will get their 15 minutes of fame. So here we go. Some of the work that Andy Warhol does, and we're gonna replicate, is he takes items from the cupboard or from popular things, and then he remakes them. So this one is a piece of cake that I made out of a shapes box, and I just put a couple of slits in it and a couple of little feet, and coloured it in with coloured pencil. This one is the very famous Campbell's soup can that I made out of a toilet roll with some paper and coloured pencil. And today we're making this one here, which is the Smith's chip packet. What you'll need for this is one piece of white paper, some coloured pencils, a grayler pencil, a rubber, whoop, a glue stick, and if you have it, a brown paper bag. If you don't have a brown paper bag, you can just use white paper as a template and make yourself a bag. Okay, first things first. Take your white piece of paper, line it up with your brown paper bag. 
be able to see it through the bag. You want it to just sit on the edge of it. So just put in a couple of marks where you're gonna cut it out. You can either cut, I'm just gonna use a ruler to get rid of the extra bit of paper. Excellent. Okay, then you wanna draw your design on. So at the top, we have a diamond shape and then the Smith sits in the middle. So we'll do a banner. You can Google up how to do banners. Rub out the middle part of the diamond. You want a couple of chips on the bottom. Now chips are an organic shape, so make sure they've got a bit of movement to them. And then you want the chicken leg down to the side. Here we're going to do our uh, bubble writing of Smiths. Whoop. And then start your coloring in. You wanna use medium pressure. So remember hard, medium, light. Use medium pressure to put your first lots of color in. Remember a dark outline always looks pretty good. Start your coloring. All of these ones are mostly block colors. So color in the block colors. However, when you get down to the chips and the chicken leg, you wanna use um, the art element of value, which means that you're going to draw with hard pressure using the same color, but lighten it off as you go up and that for it gives you a different tone to your one color. Okay, once you've colored yours in entirely, take your brown paper bag. You wanna put on a, a lot of glue for this one so that it stays on nice and solid. So glue like a monster truck. Push your front cover on. Make sure it's on really solid. If you've got any daggies, just push the daggies down. Then you wanna take yourself some newspaper. Scrunch the newspaper up. Pop it inside. To give your chip packet some volume. Then you want to glue down the top to seal the chips in. Hold on to this for a bit. Then you want to manipulate the shape of your chips so they have a bit of movement to them. And there you have your finished packet of chips. Have a go at making uh, a piece of cake. And if you've got some toilet rolls, have a go at making a Campbell soup can. Okay, remember, be good to the people who are good to you. Take care, guys. Bye. Well, thanks for that fantastic display of pop art, Mrs. Turton. It was fantastic. Uh, I wonder if anyone else is going to send in some pop art into the, um, to the, what is it, the chat. Yeah, so I think we need more people to send in how-to videos. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to send in your how-to video, please send a message to the school Facebook page. Yeah, I want to see a how-to video of how to make a hamburger. That'd be good. All right, guys, that's a rapidly wrap, wrap, wrap on <laughs> Gatsby <Gatsby's> Street <laughs> TV. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell of Guthrie Street to TV channel. Make sure you subscribe to it. Tell your friends about us. Um, we're going to leave you with some diss moments. So some diss. Diss. And we'll see you next Monday. Bye. See ya.